Good morning and welcome to Authentic Life Church. We're so glad that you're here with us, whether you're joining us here um, in person or if you're still joining us online. We're just really grateful that you're connecting with us in this day. Either way, you can access your bulletin, um, your connection card, and our tithes and offerings, either online or here in person. Um, you can give securely on our platform at AuthenticLifeChurchAZ.com. And um, you can look at our announcements as well. Uh, we are not having life groups this week um, since it is Thanksgiving. We hope that you and your families will have uh, a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, we will still be meeting next week, and, and Pastor Jeff may have an announcement about that later. Um, but everything that we're doing right now, our pastor's coffee, our um, membership classes, baptism, we're doing all those things. It's just looking a little bit different. But if you're interested in one of those things, if you're interested in getting involved with a life group, and coming to a membership class and connecting with Pastor Jeff at, at Pastor's Coffee. Let us know, and we'll work out a way to do that peaceably with you so that you can still connect with us, um, but in a way that you are you and your family are comfortable with. We would love that. Um, I also want to thank everyone who donated a box to Operation Christmas Child. Yesterday I dropped off 55 boxes from our church, which is more than we dropped off last year. I think we were at 46 last year, if I remember correctly, and then uh, an additional five boxes that I know of that were dropped off separately. So that's 60 boxes from our congregation. I think that's amazing, and I uh, thank you guys. Um, continue to pray for the children who will receive those. Pray for their families. Um, Pastor Jeff has a friend who is actually at one of the box uh, distributions to the children, and and just uh, was really touched by that. So um, just remember that it's not just a box. It's potentially someone coming into the kingdom of God. And we're so grateful that we get to be a part of that. If you didn't get one last week and you want one, there's uh, stickers in the back that say, I packed a shoebox. So uh, we'd love to have you uh, grab one of those on your way out. Um, I think that's it for this morning's announcements. I'm going to turn it over to Garrett Stewart. Let's uh, pray as a body of Christ in worship. Lord, that we come together today, um, children gathered around our Father's table, to praise you, to lift you up, and to celebrate what you are doing in our lives, Lord, and what you are doing in the world. May our worship be a sweet offering to you. May it rise to you. In your name, amen. Please stand. Victorious, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Come and all your wisdom. In love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring in our expectation, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever, 
deeper and your God be lifted higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. We lift up their hearts. We lift the name of Jesus. From May to Adrian, your kingdom has no end. We lift up their hearts. God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. And there's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the like a flood comes flowing down and at the cross at the cross i surrender my life i'm in awe of you i'm in awe of you where your love ran red and your sin washed white i owe all to you i owe all to you jesus and there's a place where sin and shame are powerless where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down and at the cross at the cross i surrender my life i'm in awe of you i'm in awe of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you, I owe all to you, here my hope is found here, on holy ground here I bow down, here I bow down, here arms open wide here, you save my life here i bow down here i bow down here my hope is found here on holy ground here i bow 
down here i bow down here arms open wide here you saved my life here i bow down here i bow at the cross at the cross i surrender my life i'm in awe of you i'm in awe of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white i owe all to you i owe all to you at the cross at the cross i surrender my life i'm in awe of you i'm in awe of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white i owe all to you 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 jesus lord we do owe it all to you you are the lion you are the lamb the savior and the shepherd lord bless us as we come together lord bless jeff as he pastor jeff as he brings your word to us May you speak through him in your name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm on. There we go. There we go. You know, that was my fault. I didn't have the pack on there. So see, yeah, you knew. You knew it was my fault. There's no there's no doubt there. All right. Hey, church, it's good morning. It's a great morning to be here. I don't know if you guys got out this morning or not and just looked at the at the sunrise and just seen the beauty um, that God painted for us this morning. And uh, church, when we sing that song, um, Let's never lose. Let's never like lose the ability to be in awe of God. You know, it's just uh, sometimes we can do that, and we just um, we we miss what He's doing. And so hopefully, hopefully today's a good morning for you. This morning we wrap up our five week series um, focused on division focused series, and really uh, we've been taking the time each week to see who God has called us to be as His church, right? To uh, to see who Jesus is, right? And look how to and we we looked at what it looks like to follow Him. Uh, guys, in a, in a world, uh, in, in it really in a season right now, where it's easy to get distracted, it's easy to get comfortable, it's easy to get complacent, it's easy to get all of those things, it is vital for the church, for the family of God, to not lose focus. And so for the first week, here's a recap a little bit of our, of, our, of our series. The first week, we looked at who Jesus is. We looked at Matthew 1 through, 1 through 4, and we looked at just in that section of who Jesus is. And we saw things like this, that he is the Savior. He's the one that rescued us from our sins. He is the promised one. He is the one that wise men seek and bow down and worship. He is fully God, fully man. He is king, and Jesus is Lord. And because of all of that, we saw in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus goes up to these two sets of brothers, and he calls them, and he's also calling us to follow him. And we looked at what it looked like to, to follow him, and we know that he's worthy of us following him. He's worthy of our surrender. Church, in our life, when he's Lord, that's what this means. He comes first, right? He is in charge of our lives and of our church. Over the last three weeks, uh, after we looked at that, we looked at the mission for Authentic Life Church to help us stay focused. We exist, church, to connect people to Jesus, to grow together and live our lives authentically for him. If you're saved, if you're a follower of Jesus, the first one that it says is to connect people to Jesus. Here's the thing. Jesus has called you and equipped you, and he sends you out to go and tell others about Jesus. He places 
us where we are, and he puts people in our lives that are far from God, people that are not saved. He places them in our lives so that we can be with them, see them, so that we can love them like he does, and then pray for them and go out and tell others about him. And then after that, we spent two weeks looking at growing together. And, and, we, and we learned that Jesus, when he saves us, here's a great thing. Jesus doesn't just leave us where we are, right? He wants to take us on a path to become more and more like him, to grow in our walk with him. And he calls us to do that, not just by ourselves, but he calls us to do that together, right? The Christian life, regardless of what you've heard anywhere else, the Bible teaches us that the Christian life was never meant to be lived outside of community. Jesus never meant for you and me to do this life alone apart from the church, apart from his people. The Bible tells us in Romans, or excuse me, in Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25, we looked at that last week, that we're to watch out for one another. What does that mean? To be intentionally involved in each other's lives. We're to provoke and help and push, really, each other to pursue Jesus and to live out the life that he's called us to live together. And then the last thing we saw last week was this, not to neglect the regular gathering together as a church. That word neglect means to abandon. We're, we are to make it a, pro, a top priority in our life to be together, learning and growing and serving and pursuing Jesus. All of that is to be done together. And so that, that recap leads us to where we are today, looking at living authentically for him. Jesus is who we follow. Jesus is who we tell others about, and he is who we grow to be like. And as we grow and pursue Jesus, that leads us to live lives that are authentic, that are real. So let's talk about that for a minute. When we think about the name Authentic Life Church, right, the name is intentional. It wasn't just something that we thought, man, that sounds pretty clever. We're going to roll with that, right? It's about us being real followers of Jesus. And also having real relationships. We don't want to be Christians. I don't know about you, but I can speak for, for myself. I don't want to be a Christian. We don't want to be Jesus followers by name only. Right? We want our lives to give evidence that we belong to Jesus. Our lives should give evidence that we are children of God. And so, you know, a lot of us got the whole Sunday morning Christian life down. We've got that down pretty well, right? We've got it down, and we, we've got it marked down on our car. We've got the fish on the back of our car. We've got Christian on our social media. We've got all those things. We wear the T-shirt. But what about Monday through Saturday? What about in our homes? What about in our jobs? What about with our friends and our neighbors? We want our lives to be real and authentic and give evidence, not that we're perfect, Far from that, but our lives should show the world that we belong to Jesus. And think about our relationships. Our relationships should do the same, right? We want to be a church that is a, a church of real relationships. And so as a, as a church, we want to have authentic or real relationships. And we pursue that in three ways, church. The first one is a real relationship with Jesus, right? A real relationship. We're with him and we're walking with him and we're pursuing that relationship. Second is what we talked about last week, a real relationship with one another, the body of Christ. And third, we need to have a real relationship with those around us, our neighbors, those in our community, those that God has placed in our life. We should have a real relationship with those in the world around us. In church, when it comes to living out this authentic life, when it comes to following Jesus in a real and authentic way, you know, this message could have been a, a passage of surrender or giving God a blank check or could have been a lot of different things. But the Lord led me to, to, to this this morning. We live a, a, a life of authentic authenticity and following Christ by being in the word of God and living out what it tells us to do. We learn how to be authentic followers of Christ by hearing and learning from God, and we hear from God through his word, through the Bible. You know, I've seen pictures. Emily was talking about a friend of mine. She's a missionary in Peru, and it's just been really neat to see them opening up those boxes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're coming in, and uh, it, just the situation that they're in is pretty rough, but they, they serve them all the time. They give them food. They give them clothing, all this stuff. And then just to watch them up from young to old and just having the parents there being really excited um, to see that. Um, but we've also seen pictures whenever they get their first Bible. 
and they just open up that crate. You know, sometimes we leave our Bibles on the shelves until it's Sunday morning and then we put it back. They couldn't wait to just touch it. They couldn't wait just to open it and hear what God had to tell them. Here's what I want us to do today. I want us to look at being authentic authentic followers of Jesus that are in the Bible and that are applying the Bible to their lives. And so before we dive into our main text today in James chapter 1, I want us to see two key passages that's going to help us as Jesus followers when it comes to the Word of God. So we're, we're going to get there, okay? We're going to get to the passage here in just a second, but I want us to look at three realities that for us to know before we even get to James. And so these passages will be up on the screen, uh, but the first one is, comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and here's what we see here. Paul is, is writing to Timothy. Timothy is pastoring and he is leading the church of Ephesus. And here's what's happening. He's, he's telling them, he, it's addressed to him as the pastor, but it's also the church. Here's how the church should look, and here's what you should do as a pastor. And he gets to, he gets to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and he says, hey, Tim, I need your church to know this. I need you to know this. And he says this, all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable and equipped for every good work. As we spend time in the word of God, this Bible that we hold in our hand, as we grow to be more like Jesus and live authentic uh, lives as Jesus followers, we can know that this Bible in our hands is God-breathed. It's God-breathed. The phrase inspired by God is, is literally translated in the Greek, breathed out by God. Here's what that means. When Scripture speaks, when the Bible speaks, God is speaking. Right? We can trust what it says. We can rely on it because it is the written word of God. It is true. The Bible is true. It always has been and it always will be. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and so his word will always be true. Make sense? Right? We trust God. We know he is always true and perfect, and so his word has to be the same. The second thing we see about God's word is in verse 16. It said it is beneficial for teaching, for rebu rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness. Church, as Jesus followers, we can also know that the word of God is profitable for our lives. It's good. It is beneficial. Scripture is for us to learn to be more like Jesus. It is learning. It's training and correcting and applying it to our lives. It is good for us. Church, it teaches and guides and instructs us. Every night before we go to bed at our house, we spend time with the kiddos and we open up the word of God and we read it with them. Why? Because it's good for them. It's good for them. The third thing for us to see as Jesus followers is this. We must be continually devoted to the word. All of this before we ever even get into James this morning, right? As Jesus followers, we must be continually devoted to the word. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we see this devotion modeled for us. So you've got this early church gathered together. You've got these 3,000 people, new followers of Christ with those that are already following them. And it says they, this church, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. And then to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. To this church and to these Christians, the word of God, I need you guys to hear me this. The word of God was not in addition to their life. The word of God was active in their life. Reading and living out the word of God is to be a part of who we are. And we see this lived out right there. You got these thirty or 3,000 new followers of Jesus. And the Bible says they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. What were the apostles teaching? They were teaching the Old Testament. They're teaching the Pentateuch. They're teaching the words from, from the prophets. They're teaching the Old Testament and the words and the life and the examples of Jesus. They're teaching the Bible, right? And so we know they were teaching the word of God. Now, the phrase continually devoted is key here. They weren't devoted just on Sunday morning to their Bibles. They weren't only devoted while their church was doing a Bible study that they wanted to be a part of. They were continually devoted both individually and together. Preaching the Word of God was who they were, right? Hearing and learning and understanding the Word of God was who they were. Living out and applying the Word of God to their life was who they were. 
And that last part is important because here's the reality. We can preach it. We can hear the word of God. We can know it and memorize it all we want. But if we don't live it out, then what good does it do? Any, uh, anybody have a conversation with your kids and you tell them, hey, this is what I want you to do? And they say, okay, mommy, okay, daddy, I got it. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, repeat it back to me. Okay, this is what you want me to do. Okay, now go and do it. And then it doesn't get done, right? You guys with me? I mean, that's the life of a Christian whenever we read the word of God and don't apply it to our lives. So to live authentically as Jesus followers, church, we must be continually devoted to the word and living it out. And now after all that, let's get started on the sermon today, right? Derek, you can start the timer, right? Let's turn to James chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 19 through 25. And what we're going to see here in this text is four practical steps to building our lives on God's word, right? Four takeaways to help us live authentic lives for Christ. So when we open up the word of God, how do we respond to it? How do we live that out? Four takeaways this morning. So if you guys are able, stand and read that together with us this morning. If you are online, stand and read that to honor God this morning, if you're able to do that. James chapter 1, beginning in verse 19. Here's what God's word says to us this morning. This you know, my beloved brother. He's talking to the church. But everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For anyone who is a hearer of the word and does and not a doer, he is like a man or a woman who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he's looked at himself and gone away, he's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, at the Bible, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does let's pray father we love you god we thank you for the word of god we thank you god that we can gather together and open this word of god together and and study it and learn and preach and hear and apply it to our lives and so god we thank you for the word of god we thank you that it's god breathed we thank you that it is true we thank you that we can trust it be with our ears today be with our hearts as we respond in jesus name amen you can be seated All right, so before we even got into this passage this morning, we've already seen three foundational truths to know about the Word of God. Before we even pick it up, you can know that the Bible that's in your hand, it's God-breathed, it is good for you, and it is something we should be continually devoted to. And then we come to James chapter 1, and we see that James is basically teaching us how to respond to God's Word. What, What do we do as we read it and hear it and study it? How do we respond to it? How do we live it out? And so I think we're going to look at four, four, I think four simple truths for us to know about God's word that will help us live authentically for Christ. And the first one is this, based off James chapter 1, when it comes to God's word, we are to believe it as truth. We believe it as truth. That might seem pretty normal, but you'd be surprised about how often we look at the word of God and we contemplate, do I believe that, Right? Here's the reality. God's word is true. We know that it's God breed. We believe that God is true. We need to believe that his word is true. But as we read over this passage, we see something mentioned over and over again. And that is the phrase, the word, the word. Back in verse 18, James refers to the word as the word of truth. The word of truth. And so James carries that idea in verses 21, 22, 23. He writes of the word, right? You look at verse 25. He calls it the perfect law. Different names still speaking of the word of God. And what we are seeing here is that we need to believe the word as truth. Not convinced? Look at what Jesus says in John 17, 17. Jesus is praying to God the Father and he says this, Father, sanctify them. Meaning set them apart, grow them in the truth. Your word is truth. You can write these down if you'd like. I'm just going to mention them real quick. But here's some other verses. We see that the word of God is true all over the Bible. 
2 Corinthians 6, 7 speaks of God's word being true. Colossians 1, 5, 2 Timothy 2, 15. All these passages and many more to refer to God's word as truth. And just in case you need one more, Psalm 119, 160. The author writes this, talking to God, the entirety of your word is truth. Meaning this, the Bible that we hold in our hand, there is not one speck of untruth in all of scripture and so for us as jesus followers when we approach the word of god our response when we read it is to believe it believe it in its entirety as truth Uh, authentic life we we like to say man by the grace of god we'll remain faithful to preaching and living out the word of god because it is infallible it is inerrant it is true church we can read it and trust it so next to live authentically as jesus followers we're to be in the word We're to believe it is true, and next, we're to receive it humbly. This might be one that's going to be a little bit harder to tackle and understand this morning, but we're to receive the Word of God humbly. When we open up the Word of God, we are to receive it with humility. So we're going to walk through this. Look at verse 19. This you know, my brother, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, remember that, slow to speak and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, here it is, in humility receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. As we are in the Bible, church, as we open it up, we're like, okay, it's true. I get it. I've got the word of God. It's God-breathed. It's true. I'm reading it and studying it. But the Bible is telling us that we still need to come to the word of God with humility. Here's what he means by that. Verse 19, it says this, it says, be quick to hear. That phrase, it literally in the Greek translation means hurry up and listen. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, does it? But, but we, here's the reality. We've got a lot going on in our lives. But this speaks of us having an urgency to hear from God. So we have to humble ourselves by setting things aside, right? And being in the word, we make that a priority. There's a lot going on in our lives that we hurry to be a part of. A lot of us are going to hurry to lunch. A lot of us are going to hurry to go watch ball games after this. But do we find ourselves having that sense of urgency to say, you know what? I'm going to humble myself before God Almighty and I'm going to hurry to hear what he has to say. Make it a priority. Then it says this, it says, be slow to speak. I don't know about you guys, but I need that reminder sometimes, right? So, shut up. Oh, I, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Sam told me to amen. Man. Be slow to speak. We're going to edit that part out, right? Church, when we c- I'm just in trouble, Jim. I'm just, kids can't watch it now. I said, the, I said shut up. But Then it says this. It says, be slow to speak. When we come to God's word, we should come humbly and be ready to listen. Many times when we come to the teacher, we come talking. You guys hear that? A lot of times when we come to the teacher, we come talking instead of listening. But if we believe God's word to be true, then we should be slow to speak and quick to listen. Submitting ourselves to hearing his voice over our own. Anybody need to hear that this morning? Right? Humbling ourselves to hear what he has to say instead of listening to what we have to say. I think everybody in here thinks we all have good stuff to say. But we want to be quick to hear and slow to speak. And then he says, and slow to anger. This one might be a little more complicated if we don't know exactly what that word anger means. The word anger right there is translated, it does mean being angry, but it describes a deep internal resentment and rejection. When we're conversing with someone, think about having a conversation with someone. When you're angry with that person, it makes it really hard to hear what they're saying. Amen? It does, right? We put our walls up, we're ready to push back or reject Right. So when we come to God's word where he's trying to teach us and speak into our lives and change us to be more like him, we often come with our walls already up. Or as soon as we hear or read something that we don't like, we build that wall really quick or we just flat out reject it. 
you know, we're really good at responding with joy when the Bible affirms what we want it to say. But we can get pretty ticked if the Bible doesn't fit our views. But in all of this, James is saying, when you come to God's word, come humbly. Come with your defenses down. Come ready to hear him and not you without resistance to what God is saying. That's why we must know that the word of God is God breathed and that is true. And then we can come to God in his word with humility. So that when we come to this a passage that is hard, you know, if you're living your life some way and you come to a passage, and you're like, oh, that's really hard to hear, God. Right? It doesn't say what we want it to say. We can say, God, I'm going to humbly come before you as my Lord and I'm going to trust you. Church, this helps us not pick and choose what parts of the Bible we want to believe or not. We know that the entirety of Scripture is true. So we can come humbly and continuing with that idea of being humble. And James starts talking about setting things aside with, with humility. You have to do that. You have to set things aside. So here's what he says. Verse 21, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. I'm going to take you guys a little bit further deep into what you guys ever want to know. But this is going to help us this morning. The word filthiness was a word that was used in the Greek culture, often describing earwax. You like that, didn't you, Eli? And this is going to make sense in just a minute why that's important. I think the word is intentional. James is saying, as you read the word, put aside all filth and earwax and wickedness. Because here's the thing. Too often we open up the Bible and read it. And we bring with us so many ideas. We bring ideas from this world, sinful ideas, selfish ideas. And James is saying, I need you to set that aside. I need you to clear that out of your ears. Set aside any sinful idea or thought that will get in the way of you hearing God's word clearly. I remember I was in third grade and my parents kept saying, hey, we know that you're a kid and you don't listen really well, but it's worse, right? You're not listening. Are you not hearing? I was like, I hear you just fine. I go to the doctor and find out that my ears were clogged, right? It's normal. We've got that filthiness that clogs from us here. It is normal. We've got that filthiness, church. Think about that. When we approach the word of God, we get that filthiness in our ear that clogs us from hearing God in the way he intends us to. We also see this in 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter says, therefore, putting aside all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, and then like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word so that, it may, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Just like James, here's what Peter is saying. When our hearts and our minds and our ears are full of sin and sinful thoughts, we cannot hear from God clearly. We cannot pursue Jesus like we should. And so we clean out those ears, right? We set aside things that do not please God, any ideas that go against the word of God, and we long for the word of God. When we come humbly before God and we set that sin aside, then we can hear clearly so that we can grow and live for Christ. In our passage, James is saying, be aware of how you are listening and reading God's word. Are you coming? This is a question. Are you coming before God and his word with humility? Are you coming with walls and attitudes and sin clogging your ears? James says in verse 21, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. The word of God that we hold in our hand isn't just another seller that's going to be on top seller for a couple weeks and then we move on to the next book. The word of God is powerful. It is what it is what we learn. It's it, we, we learn of God in it and who he is. And we learn of the gospel of Jesus in this Bible that we hold in our hands, our words of good news. It's a love letter, right, that tells us about Jesus and his love for us and how we can know him and follow him. It teaches us how to live a life that pleases him. It teaches us of our need for him. It teaches us how to live and obey him. And so the question is, are we in it? Are we believing it as truth and are we receiving it with humility? And so to follow Jesus authentically, we come to his word, we believe it is true, and we come ready to listen and grow and learn with humble hearts. Number three is this. When you come to the word of God, come ready to remember it. 
come ready to remember it. Now, this might sound a little bit obvious, but God's word has to remind us of this all the time. You go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, and you, you want to write those words on your heart, right? Psalm 119.11 describes it this way, treasuring God's word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. Remember it. What we read and what we learn, we are to remember it so that we can use it and apply it when we need it. Look how James describes it. He says, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not just hearers who deceive themselves. Here he goes. He says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, has continued in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an active doer. In this section, we see the, wor- the word look repeated. James chapter 25, he says, but one who looks intently at the perfect law. To look intently, church, this is what it means. When we come to the Word of God, we're to look at it intently. Here's what that means. To observe it carefully, to understand it, to investigate it, to study it. Oftentimes, just because we're bored or due to time constraints or whatever it may be, maybe we just want to get it done and over with because we look at the Word of God and it's like, oh, if I check it off today, I read five verses today, God, you got to bless me in some way, right? We approach God's Word like that. So we come to God's Word and just get a quick glance. But James is saying, when we come to the Bible, we are to look at it intently. We're to study it and observe it and understand it. When I was in school, as a wee long ye- young lad, Jay, I did not like book reports. Can I get an amen? All right. Because for me at the time... Reading was not fun. My wife thinks I'm crazy. You know, I want to go outside and sit under the stars, listen to music, and she wants to have fun by reading a book. Now, you go into my office right now, and you would see that I kind of have a, a love of books. I mean, I've got hundreds of them in my office. But at the time, I did not enjoy reading. So you know what I did? I learned how to read really fast. I had a lot going on in my life. I had other things that I wanted to do, and I would grab that book that the teacher gave me, and I would read through that book as quick as possible. (laughs) But then she would say, everybody read the book? Yes. All right. Now it's time to do a book report on it. And I was like, oh, right? And you actually had to remember the book and understand what was in that book so that you could write about it. Amen? Like, you teachers that, you know— Young people, book reports are great, all right? The rest of you, I'll talk to you later, right? And we come to the Bible in the same way too often. We're not really paying attention. We just want to get through it. We're not leaving any time to observe it and understand it. James tries to help us understand with this little story, this little example. He says in verse 23, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, here's what it's like. It's like a man or a woman who looks at their natural face in a mirror. But once he has looked at himself and gone away, he's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. So here it is. We've got this analogy of a person who's looking at themselves in a mirror. And they look at themselves, and then they just walk away, right? And immediately, this person has no clue to what they just looked at. James is saying that's silly, right? It's ridiculous to look into the Word of God in such a way that we can just walk away and forget what we just saw. We're going to dive into that a little bit more. Verse 25, when we come to the Word and read it, we're to be as one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and has continued in it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but an active doer. This person will be blessed in what he does. Here's the thing. When getting ready in the morning, we see ourselves in the mirror. Hopefully. Hopefully. I think some of you guys missed the mirror this morning. But you get the picture, right? We look at our face and we see what looks right or not sam you look great man you you obviously looked in the mirror i didn't want to upset you there but we look at the we look at we look at our face we look at our eyes we look at our hair we look at ourselves to see what might need to be fixed or adjusted or tended to 
And so you, you see that you might have a spot here, or you, your hair is messed up, you put makeup on, you fix your hair, you wash your face, whatever it is, brush your teeth, right? You do what needs to be done after looking at yourself in the mirror. With God's word, we look in the word of God, we hear it intently to remember it. And then we look and say, God, how do I need to apply this to my life? What do I need to do now that I've looked at it? But a lot of times we just come to the word of God, we look at it, we walk away and we don't do anything with it. That's what he's talking about, right? But we are to apply it. We're to become doers. So here's the reality, church. If you read the word of God and, there, and, and it's talking about sin and there's sin in your life, you need to address that, right? Don't walk away and forget it. Address it. If there's an action that needs to take place in your life, do it. If there's a relationship that needs to be made right, right, start that process. If we read the word and see our lives, we hear first and then we can become doers. That's called wisdom, Right? Taking God's truth and applying it to our lives. Think about here on Sunday morning. We hear the word of God preached, but are we listening intently so that we can learn and apply and understand? Or are our minds on football or lunch or on tomorrow? To live as authentic followers of Jesus, let's come to the word of God intently to know it and to remember it. And then we come to the main idea of this whole passage. The key verse. You guys ready? We come to the word of God to believe it is truth. We receive it humbly. We read it to remember it. And then to live authentically for Jesus, we come to his word and we obey it wholeheartedly. When we are saved by Jesus, when he calls us to follow him, we are to be obedient to his word. To his instructions, to his examples, to his truth. Remember, we're called to be his disciples. He doesn't just save us and leave us on the bench. We're called to be his disciples. And a disciple is one who learns from another to be like him. It makes no sense for us to be a follower of Christ if we're not looking at his life and his word intently so that we can be like him. And so we look to the word of God. Jesus says this in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. He said, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. That's a deep word, observe. To observe here in the Greek means to preserve it, to guard it, to take care of so that you don't violate it. That's what the word observe means. This is a continuing theme throughout Scripture that we are to hear from God and His Word and then put it into action. When Jesus was on earth, here's what He did, right? He was the living Word, right? He, he, he called His followers to first be with Him. Right? Be with me. Learn from me. Watch. Listen to me. And then he sent them out to apply what they learned, to be obedient to his words and his teaching and his examples. That's what he's calling us to do. So here in James chapter 1, verse 22, James says, hey, Christian, he says, prove yourselves doers of the word and not just hearers who deceive themselves. James is saying that the word should be alive in our lives. We are to live it out. We're to live out the word of God. Otherwise, we should probably not even be in it. And notice James doesn't say prove yourselves to do the word. This is not a one-time section uh, 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 action. He says let there be proof in your life that you are doers. Continually doing the word. We keep on obeying God's word. So consistently in the word, hearing it, believing it, receiving it, and being doers of it, applying it to our life. Church, here it is, in every situation, in every season, at all times, be in his word, apply it, and live it out. There's a lot of truths that people want to speak into our life, but we can trust the word of God because it's his word. Guys, we've trusted Jesus to save us eternally, amen? We've trusted him with our eternity. We can trust what he says in the Bible. Jesus followers. When it comes to authentically following Jesus and living for him, be in the word. Be devoted to it. Know that it's true. Read it humbly. Read it so that you remember it. And we should obey it wholeheartedly. As you hear it preached and read, and as you read it, apply it. So here's a question for you, Christian. What area of your life do you need to be obedient to God in? 
what area of your life do you need to be obedient to God in? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Set that stuff aside. And always acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Psalm also says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There are people today that know God's word well, that have studied it, they know it. There are people that have gone to seminary and know the Bible better than most people. But are they doing it? Are they living it out? Are you living it out? God doesn't stop at no. He says trust and follow and do to be obedient. You know, Christianity is not a, about religion amen it's not about checking boxes off it's about a relationship with jesus and his people listen to what jesus says john 14 15 jesus says hey i saved you i love you now if you love me you'll keep my commandments that's a tough one isn't it if you love me Jesus says, you will keep my commandments because he first loved us, because we love him. Let's be in his word and live it out. Let's keep it. And so here's what I want us to do in this last minute together. I want you guys to just, I'm going to invite you to do something. I want to invite you to pray and I want you to ask God. I've got, uh, I've got the, the question up here. God, what area or areas of my life have you been telling me to obey, to do this, and I've not done it? What areas of our life is God says, I want you to do this. You've read it in the word of God. God, I see it in here. I know you're telling me to do it, but I've not done it. Church, I want you to just, I want to challenge you. Just take that moment with God here real quick and just pray and ask God, what area of my life am I not being obedient to you in? And God, help me be obedient. So take a moment as Derek plays this morning and just gives us some background music as we think and pray. God, what area in my life that I hear clearly from you in the word of God am I not being obedient in? Ask, ask God that question this morning. Father, as your people seek you in your heart, in your words this morning, God, we've got the word of God, the Bible, scripture, God's word, truth. And as we follow you, God, we want to be real. We want to be authentic. We want our lives to give example or evidence that we know and follow you. And we learn how to do that from the word of God. And God, in the Bible, you teach us and you instruct us and you correct us so that we can become who you want us to be. And so God, as we are in it and learning and remembering it, studying it, God, we know that you teach us in those moments. And sometimes you're saying, hey, this is what I want you to do or this is what I need you to stop doing. But God, in areas of our lives where we are not being obedient, God, we we come to you. Help us have a heart of just repentance. That God, make us more like you. Help us live out what you're teaching us. In Jesus' name. You guys can come. And for this last song, church, we never want to walk away without the opportunity to know Jesus. We're talking about the word of God. We're talking about his love for us. If you're here today, if you're online, you would say, I don't know Jesus. I don't have a relationship with Jesus. It's always been about religion for me. I don't know Jesus. I'd love to have that conversation with you today. Reach out today and let us know how we can point you to Christ. Why don't you guys stand as we sing this last song together. So here it is, my alabaster heart. Hidden treasure there back here. 
sounds the years of endless praise for you worthy far beyond all I could say there's a lifetime worth of worshiping the nuance of your name so let it rise like incense to my whole life fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet every breath and offering my heart cries these lungs sing over you my worthy king of kings so let it rise There it is, your alabaster cross, giving all you are for all I'm not. I can't believe that that's the kind of thing you are. How could I not bring a lifetime worth? worship to you God so let it rise like incense my whole life a fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet and every breath and offering my heart cries these lungs sing over you my worthy King of Kings. So let it rise like incense my whole life, a fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet. Every breath and offering my heart cries these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Kings. All my love, all my love, all my love, you can have it all, all my heart, all my soul, all I own, you can have it all, all my love. All my love, all my love, and you can have it all. My heart, all my soul, all I own, you can have it all. You can have it all. Let it rise. Every ounce here broken at your feet, and every breath and offering my heart cries, these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Kings. So let it rise like incense. My whole life, a fragrance every ounce, here broken at your feet. And every breath and offering, my heart cries, these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Kings. So let it rise. Let it rise. All right, church, thank you, team, this morning for leading us.
Hey, church, before we head out, just a couple things real quick. We're going to be announcing probably tomorrow, maybe even later today, on what next week will look like. Next week is uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But uh, a lot of times people travel, and so we're going to try to make the best decision possible. We may be doing one service at 1030, but we'll get that information out to you as soon as possible. On your way out, don't forget to put your connection cards uh, back there if you've got a prayer request or to sign up for something and also be a part of what God is doing. So we, we're, we're called to, to give our tithes and offerings. And so um, as the Lord leads you in that, um, give your tithes and offerings either in that box back there, that lock box, or through online at authenticlifeaz.com slash giving. And then the last thing is this. Next week is going to be a special service. It's going di- to be different. Uh, we're going we're gonna to gather and we're going to uh, make much of Jesus and we're going to give him praise and thanksgiving. Be ready to, to pray. Be ready to, to seek God's heart. Be ready to give him the praise and the gratitude that he deserves. And so it's going to be a good week next week. We're looking forward to that. God, we love you. God, we pray, Lord, that as we just say, as we are in the word of God, help us apply it to our lives. Help us live a life just of complete sacrifice and surrender to you. God, help us live a life, really, where we just write a blank check and say, here you go, I'm yours. Your word tells us that whether we eat or drink, just mundane things that we do all the time, we do for your glory. So God, we pray, Lord, today, we would walk out of here ready to live lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.